Well, hello, heartbreaking talks listeners. Today we have about 10 stories from women who have cheated and from men whose wives cheated on them. Honestly. While I was reading them, I thought several times about stopping and making the video shorter. How can we trust women again? Well, let's start. Story 1. Until recently, I was a faithful and devoted husband who worked tirelessly for my wife, believing that she was equally faithful and devoted to me. However, everything changed when I reconnected with a friend from high school. After having dinner, we talked about our lives since high school. He had been married once, but found his wife in bed with another man. He told me that in his experience, almost half of all women cheat on their husbands, and that the best sex a man can have is with a cheating woman, as they eventually end the affair themselves. I initially dismissed his views, but he challenged me to test them. I agreed, but with one non-negotiable condition. He had to wear an eavesdropping device and show me all messages between him and my wife. At first, I was confident that my wife would resist his advances. However, I was shocked to discover that not only did she not stop him, but she even engaged in sexually explicit conversations with him. My wife had been sexting another man behind my back for a month. Eventually, my friend asked her to spend an afternoon with him, and she agreed, saying that I was out of town visiting my sick mother. I was furious with my wife until my friend revealed that he would not meet her and would stop all contact with her immediately. After this incident, I was in constant turmoil about what I had discovered about my wife and how a stranger had come to know her better than I ever could. Two weeks later, my friend called to check on me. I admitted that I was struggling with the reality of the situation and my wife had noticed that something was wrong. I lied to her, saying that it had to do with my company's organizational restructuring and the possibility of layoffs, as well as my mother's health issues. He told me that he could relate, considering his experience with his ex-wife. He further explained that if he were to ever remarry, it would only be with the consent of his potential wife to agree to a polyamorous relationship. I laughed out loud but wished him the best of luck with that. He then asked why not hang out with him on the weekend I had planned to visit my mom. I told him that I was concerned about my mom but would be open to any suggestions he had for a good time. He said that it was a secret but if I agreed, he would make sure that I had the best time ever. So I called my mom and she encouraged me to have some fun. The out of town weekend came and I kissed my wife goodbye, still somewhat heartbroken from finding out who she truly was. I picked up my friend, and on the way out of town, I asked him if my wife had tried contacting him. At first, he was somewhat reluctant to answer me until he said yes. He explained that he told her he had a work-related issue to attend to and would have to take a rain check. He also said that he stopped responding to her sexually graphic texts. I asked him if he could show them to me, and he asked me if I was sure I was strong enough not to fly off the handle. I told him yes since I had already endured the worst pain possible and no longer viewed my wife the same way. We stopped the car so that I could read the text messages my wife sent him. OMG. I exclaimed, WTF. Who is this person? The woman who was my wife had been replaced by a sex-addicted skank. During our courtship and subsequent marriage, she had never acted that way towards me. My friend explained that during sexual encounters with married women, he would ask them if they ever behaved in such a raunchy manner with their husbands. He said that cheating wives confessed to him that they did not because they were afraid their husband's view of them would change to that of whores and they would lose their respect forever, as if sexually betraying their husbands wasn't enough by itself he rolls his eyes. We arrived at our destination and my friend tried to cheer me up by saying not to worry because he had a right to know all planned out. He guaranteed that after this weekend, my life would change for the better. I told him to lead on. Once we got to our hotel room, my friend made a few phone calls and announced that he had reserved a table at one of the best steakhouses in the city. He wasn't joking, the food was some of the best I had ever tasted. Our next destination was a dance club where we were seated on comfortable sofa-style seats. My friend ordered a bottle of Hennessy and four glasses. When I asked him why four, he said that we would soon have company. I thought he meant two more men, but I was mistaken. After a few minutes, two of the most attractive women I had ever seen arrived. My friend hugged and kissed them on the cheek and introduced them to me before having them take a seat. They quickly downed their cognac and were lively and engaging. We danced with them for a while and had more to drink. We left the club, hailed a taxi, and went back to the hotel with the women. Both my friend and I started making out with them in the cab, I briefly thought about my wife, but the thought passed quickly. 
Once we got to the room, everyone's clothes came off and the wild sex began. I never thought that I would be involved in a threesome with two beautiful women like the one we had that weekend. It began on Friday night and lasted until midday on Sunday. Saying that I was a changed man would be an understatement because before I discovered who my wife truly was, I would never have considered cheating on her. Now, I don't care if she's sleeping with another man so much that I even told my friend he could sleep with her anytime he wanted. He said he would only do it if he was sure I could handle it. Just as my wife does not regret asking another man to take her to a hotel and have sex with her, I do not regret having a threesome with two beautiful women in a hotel room. So, what do you think of this story? I want to hear your opinion, as the story is controversial. Story 2. So I'm a guy with a lot of hobbies. I have many friends, both guys and girls, but for some odd reason, bachelor parties and groom suites have always felt like home to me. I think this is part of why I love my hobbies so much. Generally, they are times out with the boys. There's something about shotgunning a beer, spinning five times around a nine iron, and racing across a field of cacti against one of the boys that makes you forget how serious life really is for a few minutes. Let's take another look at me. I am 25, have a great high-paying career that I am passionate about, love my God, and believe family is the most important principle in existence. I am also recently divorced from my lifetime sweetheart whom I met at church during middle school. We dated in high school but broke up for many reasons. We both went off to enjoy our high school lives as friends and eventually left for college where we experienced and learned all the things that a young single co-ed might. We hung out one time over Christmas break my sophomore year of college and had sparks at first sight. Little did we know, we were both rebounding off flings that ended badly for both of us. After that first night over Christmas break, we all but moved in with each other immediately. It was just a blur of vodka, parties, and sex for days on end. Things were simple, neither one of us had any serious inclinations toward school or careers, and we pretty much lived for good times with each other. Passed forward a few years of actually living together, I have graduated, proposed, landed my dream job, worked two years of an awesome internship, and am waiting for my bride-to-be to walk across the stage with honors and tons of job prospects as an elementary school teacher. At this moment, I realize that we would be getting married exactly 14 days after this moment. To keep a long story long, we had the biggest, over-the-top wedding you can imagine. 400 people, a 22-member bridal party, over a year of stress, $80,000, and a week-long honeymoon in Mexico waiting for us on the other side. We came home from Mexico to close on our first home together, a new 3,200-square-foot beauty five minutes from our families and the homes where we grew up, the perfect place to start a family. Our days were spent planning our next vacations, picking out kids' names, going to the lake on our boat, and hanging out with our awesome group of friends, who were all married around the same time that we were, hence my likeness to groom's parties. We had what all young married couples want. Couple friends who were always down for a new adventure or shenanigan, people to share the trials and tribulations of being young and married. We had the world by the short and curlies and had the Instagram pics to prove it. What could possibly go wrong, you might ask. After a year and a half of marriage, she was starting a new semester at school, and I was gearing up for peak season at my job. We were both working 60-hour weeks and not making time for each other during the week. Ever since I was a little kid, my hobbies were always my stress reliever. So naturally, when the weekend would come, I would always want to plan duck hunts, mountain bike days, or day trips to the track to ride dirt bikes. I would always be polite and ask my wife if she had anything planned before I would make plans for my hobbies. I thought that I was being a good husband by asking her before I made plans. In reality, what I thought was polite was taken as something more along the lines of this. Do you have something planned? If you do, I'll come, but I'd much rather go do man stuff with the boys of course, I didn't realize this until it was too late. Fast forward to November 2015. I am lying on the couch waiting to have surgery in the coming days after a motocross accident the weekend before. It is getting late and my wife is still not home from work with dinner and fresh eyes for my cold therapy machine. I am depressed as I could tell after my injury took me out of work and out of my hobbies that my wife was emotionally checked out of our relationship. When she came home, I told her that she was really making me sad and that I wanted to know what was wrong so that I could fix whatever was wrong. It was at this point that she told me that she no longer loved me, that she didn't think she could ever love me again, and that she wanted to go learn to be independent and pay bills all on her own. 
people reading this should know that my wife lived an extremely sheltered life as an only child with a dad that loved her far more than he loved himself. She did not know how to pump her own gas until three months into our marriage. This threw up major red flags in my mind before marriage. But I pushed them to the side because she was the girl I had dreamt of my whole life, literally. Disclaimer. It may sound like I neglected her a lot, but readers should know that we went out to eat five nights a week and spent every moment together that I wasn't working or writing. We had a nightly ritual of eating dinner, singing and dancing in the shower, and then binge watching our chosen show of the month before crawling into bed. While I could have spent more time with her, that wasn't the issue. In my eyes, our life was absolutely perfect in every way, all the way up to the night she broke the news to me that she wanted out. The next three months were the toughest of my entire life up to that point. I was glued to the couch due to surgery or depression, I'm not totally sure the line got pretty blurry around Christmas. My wife was living at her parents' house and I was all alone in the home we bought together, surrounded by wedding photos, cute pillows with our wedding date, and reminders everywhere that I was absolutely alone. I skipped church because I couldn't bear all of the questions from the congregants about how is that beautiful bride of yours. During this time, I talked with our pastor, her dad, my dad, my brothers, my boss, and everyone in my life that I respected. She shut all of her friends out of her life and devoted all of her time to school and after-school programs. I built up a lot of resentment over the fact that she was living with her parents in a loving home where she had a dog, parents, warm meals, and free laundry service while I was stuck at our home alone, waiting for her to make up her mind about whether she wanted to try to make it work or file for divorce. She said she moved out so she could see if she missed me or not, but how could she really know if she missed me or not if she was in a comfortable place where her parents were taking care of her every need. I still believe that if she had been in my situation, we wouldn't have been in limbo for three months and that we would more than likely still be together today. I take full responsibility for the issues that I caused in our relationship, but the pain that she put me through for those three months was something that I didn't think I could forgive. A big part of the problem was an idea in her head that she could find a better life elsewhere, that she could be married to someone else and be deeply in love each and every minute of every day the Nicholas Sparks kind of thing. Now, I've only been married once and it wasn't like a fairy tale most days, so I can't speak with certainty here. But I can tell you this. From the outside looking in on other marriages, no one has that. If you are single while you're reading this and think I'm wrong, see our Facebook Instagram wedding pics, then come back and see me. The grass always looks greener, and that's part of what made this whole process so hard. From the outside, our grass was the greenest, and everyone we knew believed it. It was so green that even I, in my ignorance, believed it too. My wife didn't come with an owner's manual, I tried to learn everything on the fly, and over six years, we were together I thought I was pretty successful, right until I realized that I apparently wasn't. Maybe my situation is extremely unique. Maybe I really was delusional to believe that the life we were leading was real. Maybe she just lost her mind and things weren't as bad as I feel they must have been in hindsight. But I can tell you this. Having the one person who knows you better than anyone in the world tell you that they no longer want to be a part of your life is absolutely far and out the most devastating pain that I have ever felt in my 25 years on earth. Situations like this are why guys end up like Barney Stinson. If you don't know who that is, please turn on any Wi-Fi enabled device, slap yourself in the face, and find out. One second. The above story was what I accepted for five months. I found it yesterday she had an affair and got pregnant. Fucking skank broke me. As for me, I have no comments on this story. I just won't trust people anymore. Click the subscribe button and let's keep listening. Story 3. I am a 23-year-old female who is engaged to be married next year. Unfortunately, I am having an affair with a 45-year-old married man who I work with. My fiancé is a reliable, hard-working, and caring man, and up until this affair started, I was happy and looking forward to our future together. However, looking at how things are now, I realized that I wasn't 100% happy. I met the other man, Om, um, over a year ago at work, and the attraction was instant. However, I never thought in a million years that he would be interested in me, and given both our relationship statuses and the age gap, neither of us actively pursued the other. A friendship grew over time, and we found that we have a similar sense of humor and interests that made us connect. 
It wasn't until just over three months ago, after communications at work became very frequent and he ended up taking me home as I was unwell, that he gave me his phone number. It wasn't sleazy, and at first, it was just friendly chat. But not a day has gone by since then that we haven't texted or spoken to each other, even if we don't see each other at work. Things intensified pretty quickly after communication started out with work, which eventually led to a kiss before a work event and excuses being made to see each other at lunch times, after work for drinks, and eventually for stays in hotel rooms. I've never met anyone like him. It's difficult to put it down into words, but we just bounce off each other. The age gap doesn't feel like an issue when we're together, and our best times together have been sitting on the wall at lunchtime people watching or having drinks in the pub after work, it's not just sexual. But here's where it gets complicated. Not only am I due to get married next year, but I am leaving at the end of the year with my fiancé to travel for four months. The Om recently had his first child with his wife at the beginning of the year, which makes us both sound like really shitty people, and believe me, the guilt I feel every single time I think about what I'm doing reminds me of what a shitty person I've become. He has told me that he loves me, and I believe him. I love him too, like no other. He hasn't talked much about his marriage, and it's not my place to ask. He mentioned feeling empty and believed that getting married to his long-term partner was the right thing to do, given his age, they've been married for about two years. This gives me the impression that he may not be completely happy. He has mentioned speaking to a lawyer, presumably about divorce, but I haven't asked any more about it. He wants to keep in touch while I'm traveling and see how we both feel when I come back in about seven months before deciding whether we should be together or not. It could turn our lives upside down if we decide to be together, both personally and professionally, so we have to be completely sure. However, the guilt is affecting my health. I'm run down, not sleeping well, having issues with eating, both comfort eating and not eating enough at times, and I'm not sure I can wait seven months to know how this will pan out. I can't tell anyone because of our circumstances and where we live and work is a small place. Any advice for this person who has fallen in love and is in a tough situation would be much appreciated. Thank you. Next story. I have been with my live-in boyfriend for two years. I'm 45 years old and he's 37. We've had some not-so-happy moments but mostly good times. He's a hard worker and a good provider. He loves to be happy. In the beginning, I trusted him but now he does things that make me not trust him. He denies it when I confront him, but I can't ignore the disrespectful things he does. Sometimes I think it's because of my past relationships that I have a hard time trusting him. In our first year, we were happy, and I was so in love with him. I thought he was too, based on everything he did to make me happy. At the end of our first year, he would say he loves me, but one day, I asked him if he really does love me. He answered, you know I do. But he had a look in his eyes that made me doubt it. So, I did something I shouldn't have done to get the truth. I started recording his cell phone calls, and most of his calls were to his brother. He told him that I want to get married, but he keeps telling me not now, but he'll eventually say yes to me for convenience. But he's not sure about marriage because he likes women, all types of them, because they excite him a lot. I also heard him tell his mom the same thing about liking women. I guess I stayed with him because he was drunk when he said those things. He likes to drink on weekends. I feel like a damn fool because even when he is drunk, he remembers what he said the next morning, but denies it. I have him listen to the recording and he says, I know it's my voice, but I don't remember saying those things. One serious thing he said on the phone recording with his brother was that he finds my 22-year-old daughter attractive and he might marry her instead of me. His drinking is also a problem. He is completely different, he gets aggressive, rude, and disrespectful. When he doesn't drink all week, he is a sweetheart. He asks if I need anything, we cook together, we go out together. All his good side I love, but his bad side overrides the good. Another thing I find very disrespectful is when we go to the grocery store, he will literally follow women and discreetly almost tap their ass with the grocery cart, then deny it. I have always cared about other people's needs, wants, and feelings more than my happiness. That's why I was so heartbroken and numb because I put a lot of love, care, and attention into this relationship. I think that's why I have not broken up with him, we are living together now. I feel sorry for him that he's going to miss me, his three pets, living with me, and he's going to drink more and be alone. We lived separately but still as girlfriend and boyfriend for a month. He begged, cried, and stopped drinking for a while. 
In that month, I felt so unhappy, lied to, and unwanted, so I messed up and cheated on him with his best friend. His friend has been trying to get my attention for a while now. He knows how my boyfriend treats me, he's done it in front of him, and himself would tell him, you better stop treating her wrong. But my boyfriend will walk away and the next day still say he doesn't remember doing or saying something wrong. I'm a soft-hearted person. I feel so weak sometimes that I can't find it in my heart to leave him. I feel like I failed myself, my daughter, and my happiness. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Next story. I met my boyfriend seven months ago, and I fell for him at first sight. We connected so well, however, after our first date, I had to return to my own country a month later. So, it turned out to be a long-distance relationship. He is possessive and jealous, the type of guy who I thought I would never get along with, but I felt so good with him and could not resist my feelings. So distance made him insecure. I used to go against him and tell him that it was very unnecessary. When I was back in my country, I felt so alone, and I started meeting a guy who had been interested in me for like 9 years, I always said no to him. At first, we kept it very friendly. I have been going through a tough time in my life, and he supported me, actually trying to get physical with me, it was all part of a plan I found out later. My boyfriend knew I was seeing him. After some time, he started to show a lot of interest which I longed for. I was not fully getting it from my boyfriend because he lived far away. Meanwhile, he started to say things like I have been loving you all these times, you never gave me a chance, I would make you so happy, etc. I got really confused and I was not sure whether I should have broken up with my boyfriend and be with him or stop talking to him for good. I kept him on hold for some time. Once we were in his car and we kissed. I felt so bad and I could not tell my boyfriend so I felt like I had to drop it off. I started to act cold towards my boyfriend and said rude things so that he would give up on the relationship. After some time, we started fighting and rarely spoke. I liked the attention that the other guy was giving to me, he was so caring and loving, constantly consoling me about my problems and all. So, once we got drunk, we slept together. I actually felt so ashamed and I realized how much I love my boyfriend. Two days later, I received a call from a woman who claimed to be the guy's wife. I got shocked and found out that he was married with two kids. I was petrified. He called me and told me that he didn't love his wife and the marriage was about to come to an end. He could not tell me before because he was sure that I would reject him again. I didn't believe still don't believe him. I asked him if it was all for sleeping with me, he cried and said that it's not, he truly loved me, blah blah. I stopped talking to him, changed my number, and blocked him. And every time he sent an email and apologized, I forwarded the emails to his wife so that he completely stopped. However, when my boyfriend came down to visit me, he found evidence on my phone and he completely went mad. He even slapped me for betraying him. Then he made me confess how many guys I had been with before him, I also lied about it because I knew he was old fashioned. He said horrible things to me after that. I have been called all the bad words that you can imagine. We both could not break up because of the way we feel. He made me change my number again, close all my social media accounts, and I am not allowed to have guy friends or drink with other people. He is now so insecure, wherever I go he calls to make sure there are no guys around me. He says he wants to leave everything behind and slowly forget, but he says I have to make an effort to gain his trust. Once he trusts me, we will go back to normal. My psychologist says it was traumatizing for him and I should be patient and bear with him. He told our mutual friend that he is preparing to propose to me. Nevertheless, he kissed a girl just to get back at me and judged me for my past so much and still mentions and rubs it in my face from time to time. I love him, but I don't know if we can be a normal couple again. I feel like my life is restricted now. I am so confused. Next story. Me and my fiancé have been together for about five years. We met in high school and I fell for him so fast. I was crushing on him for about three months before he actually noticed me. During that time, he was obsessing over a girl, which I had no idea about until after a month. She never gave him a chance because she was not interested in him. But I could tell that there was still something there. He still had feelings for her. I confronted him about it and he denied everything. After having six months together, one day I went through his phone to find a cute selfie we took together to send it to myself, but I found about 10 pictures of the girl he had been obsessing over. It broke my heart because I really thought me and him were meant to be. 
I didn't break up with him because I felt like I couldn't and I forgave him. About three years passed and I was still not over the way he made me feel. The way he had humiliated me, I felt that I was his second choice and I just wanted to get him back so bad, but I couldn't fully get myself to do that because I loved him. I felt so unwanted by him that I went on a website to meet new friends. Many guys were talking to me, but one in particular caught my attention. He was so enamored with me that he wanted to take me out after just one conversation. I felt beautiful and special. After being in a relationship for five years, my boyfriend lost his touch. He no longer made me feel appreciated, sexy, or beautiful. So, I continued talking to the new guy even though I had a boyfriend. When we met in person, it was magical. We had a strong connection and bond. We started to cuddle and watch movies together. One day, we watched The Notebook and it led to me making out with him. Although we both knew it was wrong, it was desirable to me. I began to fantasize about him even more. However, I felt guilty about kissing the other guy because my boyfriend was faithful and good to me. I tried to stay away from the other guy to not lose my boyfriend, but I desired him so much. I eventually saw him again and we held hands and cuddled. We had a lot in common and connected on many levels. We talked and laughed and it was one of the most beautiful moments ever. He became my best friend. However, I knew my boyfriend didn't deserve me being deceitful because he was working all day. I lied to him and told him I was on campus when I was really with the other guy. We even sexted, but I stopped because I knew it was wrong. My boyfriend proposed to me not too long ago and I said yes because I realized I truly loved him. I know that he is the one I sincerely love. However, the other guy keeps trying to talk to me, but I am trying to ignore his texts, which is so hard. I love my fiancé and I know I messed up. But if I tell him what I did, he would leave me in a heartbeat. I love him, but I am scared. I don't want to lose him, but I don't want to have this guilt in me. I feel so guilty. One more story. My wife of nine years first cheated on me over Labor Day weekend back in 2011, the year we split up. I had been faithful despite numerous opportunities to cheat, as I work in talent acquisition in the television industry, I turn down more offers than most guys see in a year. So, on Sunday of Labor Day weekend, she said she was off to Napa with Sherry to visit a winery, and I said okay. I knew Sherry, and she's a great friend, so I had no worries. Later that night, I received a call from another girlfriend of hers, who said that my wife was too drunk to drive home. When I asked to speak with her, the girlfriend said, uh she's too drunk to talk on the phone right now. My wife came home at noon the next day, and after a perfunctory hello, she went straight to the shower. I started to notice that she was on her cell phone a lot. A couple of days later, she asked me, why do I need your permission to put a screen lock on my phone? I told her, it's because I'm the lead account holder. Give me it, honey, I'll put whatever you want on it. However, she wouldn't hand me the phone. It was suspicious and a big mistake on her part. As I was the account holder for our family plan, later that evening, I was able to look at all the activity on the account. By October, she and her lover were exchanging 11,000 text messages a day. The straw that broke the camel's back was when I found out she had also been exchanging lewd photos and videos with this person. I backed up everything as evidence and confronted her the next day. At first, she denied it, but I showed her a video of one of her performances and she couldn't deny the truth. I told her, if you stop what you're doing and we get some counseling to help us through this, perhaps we can fix what is broken. Her reply was, I'm not stopping. My reply to that was, well, then you'd better find someplace else to live because I am not sharing a house and a bed with a cheating slut. She packed and left, and despite our mutual agreement that we would file together using one lawyer, she filed for divorce against me. She never mentioned her adultery or her suicide attempt the previous year to her attorney. I was honest and told my lawyer everything that could be construed as negative. When we sent her counsel our interrogatories, her case fell apart like it was made of crumbly cheese. She lost everything custody, the paid-for house, the works. Our conservative county takes a very dim view of adultery and the jury did not like her actions one bit. Five years later, she has never paid one dime of her court-ordered support or our child's medical bills and that meter runs until he turns 18. So she's going to have to pay me eventually. Thinking about cheating. Do yourself a favor and get divorced first. Or you could end up like my ex. Oh, by the way, Mr. Wonderful dropped her like a used rubber as soon as she was single again. 
she went through a series of jobs, cars, and relationships, none of which worked out. Last we heard, she was sharing an apartment with three other women and unable to find a job. Through all of this, even though she has treated me like I was the villain, I never did one thing designed to cause her harm, and when her chips were down, I helped her just as I would any family member as an example to our child. And still, she vilifies me because I caught her cheating, because I exposed her dishonesty to our mutual friends, and because I defeated her so soundly in court. Until she learns to accept responsibility for her own choices, she will never succeed at anything she attempts. Know what I've been doing these past five years. Raising our child largely alone and working on myself to figure out why two marriages didn't work out. Clearly, I am half culpable, at a minimum, and if I should be lucky enough to find true love again not likely, I know, but stranger things can happen, I don't want to be the same guy who failed in two marriages. The lesson here if you catch your partner cheating and you think it's fixable, make the offer. But if they turn you down, their mind is made up, so get the best damn lawyer you can afford and get out of that bad marriage to that cheating whore as quickly and as cleanly as possible. Next story from Cheating Girlfriend. I just won't trust people anymore. Click the subscribe button and let's keep listening. I was 27 at the time and engaged to my boyfriend, 28 years old, of 3 years. It was a couple of months before our wedding and my fiancé was starting to freak out about spending his life with one person and if whether he wanted to do that with me. So he decided to go away for a couple of weeks to clear his head and think for a while. Obviously, I was very upset and emotionally torn by the whole situation, but I had to give him his space. So it has been a week since he's left and I've really been thinking as well if whether he is the guy for me. It's Friday night, all my friends are out and I'm stuck at home watching movies. Then there's a knock at the door, I answer it, and right before my eyes is my fiancé's brother. Standing there with a bunch of flowers and a bottle of wine and of course looking incredibly handsome, we sat on the couch all night talking about everything, but that all seemed to stop when he told me that his brother was an idiot for having second thoughts about me, and if he were his brother, he would never let me out of his sight. I blushed a bit. I always had a soft for him. Anyway, things start getting heavy and we start to kiss, then he starts playing with my clit and everything around me starts to disappear, this has never happened with my fiancé. He lifts me up and puts me on the bed, takes off my PJ bottoms and starts eating me out, that was something new for me, my fiancé had never done it before. He starts kissing me and then I blow him off. Straight after he fucks me so hard, so good. The best I have ever had. He leaves early the next day leaving me a note saying that he loved last night and that he would love to do it again. A week goes by and my fiancé's brother and I have been getting closer. As planned I go to the airport to pick my fiancé up, he walks in from the terminal and gives me the biggest smile he runs up and gives me a hug and a big kiss and tells me that he missed me and asks if we can talk. I say yes. We get to the airport coffee shop, sit down and order a coffee, we start to talk about our situation. The thing is, I was there to break things off with him, to be with his brother, that sounds so bad, and he was there to regain our engagement. But I told that he can't run away for two weeks and accept us to pick up where we left off, it wasn't that easy. So I told him what had happened between me and his brother, and he was furious and got into a massive rage. I told him that I didn't love him anymore. So he walked straight up to the front counter of the airport and ordered the next flight out. I tried to explain, but he just ignored me, he got on the flight and took off. I haven't seen him or heard from him for five years. Obviously, his brother and him are still talking. I moved out and moved in with my new boyfriend, my ex-boyfriend's brother, we've gotten married, we've had a child and have one on the way. I don't regret doing what I did because of the good things that have come from it. And the last story for today. I married my wife back in 1990, she was a great woman and didn't bat an eye in helping anyone out. Great conversation and she was very good in bed. I noticed a change in her about two years ago. Less conversation, she started working more at the office. Even on weekends she would be out at the spa she joined. One weekend I made my own excuse to be out of the house early and I headed over to the spa with my camera cam I had bought. Had a nice range and I waited for her to show up. She got there on time and I was zoomed in watching her through a plate glass window. In time this dude shows up and starts running on the machine next to her. They are laughing and giggling together like two old friends. They take a break and I am watching them drinking some type of juice, his hand on her back then down on her ass, she doesn't stop him. 
after about 30 minutes they come out together and hop in his SUV. I follow them out to a local park and they park and get out and walk into the wooded area. He is carrying a blanket and she has a small cooler. At some point about 10 minutes in Tay brack off the path and find a place behind some bushes and he aids the blanket out. I had circled around and shimmied up a tree about 100 feet off. I had a clear view of them sharing a bottle of wine and finally she kisses him and begins to stroke his cock through his shorts. Finally they are naked and she is on top straddling his waist and they are going at it. She is grinding her clit against him as she did with me, from what I could see of him, he wasn't all that either, so I figure she might actually love this guy. I make a good six figure salary, so I am leaning towards the money angle. Anyhow I had my cam filming the entire fuck, from the wine to her dabbing the coom off of her face and getting dressed. As they cleaned up and folded the blanket I came out of the tree and got to my car before she was back. I went to my work and made several CDs of her little trest in the park. I also got onto one of those sites that show X-rated stuff and I downloaded the CD in the amateur section of Cheating Wives. Then I went home. When she came through the door I was watching the video on the XXX site, she was like what are you watching, and I suggested she come over and see. She was too mortified. Lol I enjoyed her tantrum too much. I harassed her about who the guy was and why she was fucking him with his little cock. She had no reason other than she felt she needed a change in her life. The routineness of her life was driving her crazy. The guy was someone she knew at where she worked, so that made it easy to find him. I met him in the parking lot and had the video to show him. Turns out he's married as well. His wife's family had all the money and if I were to show it to them, he would be out on his ass and penniless such an ass he was. So now my wife is no longer my wife, she never contested the divorce, you understandably. I did delete the video off of the site, but those vids can be downloaded, so who knows who might have gotten it. Somehow her parents got wind of it. They were too pissed and her mom came to me and apologized on no reason I told her, she wasn't involved and it wasn't her fault. I see my ex's folks sometimes at some local charity events and always introduce my dates lol, I never see the ex at these events. From what her mom says she isn't seeing anyone and is mildly depressed. I am half tempted to show the mom the video. She was asking just exactly what they were doing and she seems curious. Maybe I might set some cams up in my condo and invite her over, or not. So that's how I found out my wife was cheating. It was fun. If you've made it to the end, you're the person I'm trying to reach and read these stories for. Even though I trust people less after them. Click subscribe, like, and see you in the next video.